And you used to say, it's a sin to say no when you should have said yes. Yeah. That changed my life. My belief is that there's no way to be outside of my purpose, even when I'm unconscious, even wasting time on social media, all of it, whatever, yeah. cannot be outside of my purpose. Blessings and blessings, beautiful souls. My name is Preston Smiles, and welcome to the Preston Smiles podcast. I am so pumped, so excited, because my guest today is one of the most epic, prolific humans that I've ever met. He is a million-time bestseller author. <laughs> he millions is, and millions. He is one of those people, just like David Data, that has held the hearts of, I would say, 90% of anybody in the conscious community that has a penis. Like all of us refer to his book, refer to the things that were taught in there. To me, it's way better than Way of a Superior Man. I'll get to that in a second and the reasons why. But my guest today is Robert Glover, and we aren't going to be necessarily talking about the book. We're going to be talking about an abundant life. Because as many of you know, I have a book called Spiritual Millionaire that is out now and to me one of the things that doesn't get talked about in our community is what happens when you are a sacred yes to your yes mm. what happens after that what happens after you put the book out what happens after the thing what what does that life look like and and how do you cultivate it in such a way that it feels good so robert yeah let's freaking go it is good to see you man yes to the sacred yes that <laughs> that is so good you know we haven't seen each other in person physically since we were away on a weekend Correct. together. Which was e easily eight years ago? Six. Six, six to seven. Six to seven years There we go. Okay. Ago. There yeah. we go. Yeah. yeah. Well, neither one of us knew who the other person was. That. We're just at, the, at this retreat you know, getting initiated. Yes. And um, and then at the end of the retreat, we go, well, you're this person? You're that person? Yeah, oh, yeah. how about that? Yep. Yep. It was absolutely beautiful. I was telling these guys uh, before you got here that story and how appreciative I was to see you at that time, still now, as an elder, still doing his work, right? Still oh, willing yeah. to- Never ends. Right? Never Open ends. your chest up and go, all right, let me see what's here. Yeah, never and ends. That's a big deal, man. That's a really big deal. I, I was at another men's retreat just this last week mm -hmm. here in the area with, with some other uh, men's coaches I've known for a while as well. And um, yeah, I by far was the oldest person there. And um, it just feels so good to see the young men mm. That are, they're claiming their power, claiming their consciousness, claiming their hearts. And, and yeah, it, it, it is kind of an odd feeling to have all that. So many men looking up to me, that. you know, it's this kind of, I still think I'm 28. I'm only about 40 years off on the math, but <laughs> yeah, it, inside it still feels like I'm just 28. I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm just getting started is yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. And, um, th but it does feel good to know I, I've, I've been through some things that are helpful for people. Real talk. The book that we're speaking about is No More Mr. Nice Guy. You need to buy that and you need to buy Spiritual Millionaire if you're watching this right now. No more Go Mr. on Amazon, buy them both at the same time and it'll say people who bought No More Mr. Nice Guy also bought Spiritual Millionaire. That. People who bought Spiritual Millionaire also bought No More Mr. Nice Guy. That's a great marketing go. tool. Yes. You know, I have so many places I want to go in this interview, but the first one and that I want to start with is what has happened to your life since you writing that? <laughs> All right. Well, we don't have enough time. I am sure. I started writing No More Mr. Nice Guy. I didn't set out to write a book. Mm. I just, I, I started working on me in my early 30s. I'm 68 now. Mm. So I was in my early 30s. I ended up in a 12-step group and then ended up in therapy, then ended up in a men's group. And I was a therapist myself at the time. And um, and I started just coming to understand that, you know, the, this meme of, I'm a nice guy. That's yeah. a good thing. You know, everybody should like me and love me and I should get my needs met. And, you know, nobody should ever get mad at me or call me out on anything. Mm -hmm. And in therapy, working with, with clients, like a lot of guys were coming to me saying the same thing. I'm a nice guy. I'm the nice guy you'll ever meet. How come my wife's never happy? It's never good enough. How come we never have sex anymore? So I started a No More Mr. Nice Guy men's group. Probably the first one is 30, 30 plus years ago. Huh. And, um, and I just started writing chapters to give to these guys, just lessons. I, I, I didn't set out to write a book. And about six, seven years later, kind of, it finally turned into a book. It took about three years to get it published. It came out in print in early 2003. So it's been over 21 years. So I finished writing it 25 years ago, at least. Hmm. My life has been through changes, had a marriage end, went through a phase of being single for at least a dozen years. I married again, been married to my beautiful wife, Lupita, for seven and a half years. 
years. She's Mexican. We live in Mexico, so I got to learn Spanish <laughs> in, in uh, my older age. But you know what? I've, I've got to watch over the last 25 years just so many changes going on in this world, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, gotten all the way to the extremes of toxic masculinity and hashtag me too. And, mm -hmm. you know, and what's just been so exciting for me is watch, we kind of went from a, a pendulum over here that I guess we could call the patriarchy mm -hmm. that, you know, of all the evils of that, but all the goods of it, of mm -hmm. the providing and protecting swung the other way, toxic masculinity. And, and now what I'm loving is it's not, it's not going to swing somewhere in the middle. We're taking it up that. to another level. There are so many amazing men's coaches. I put you in that category. So many, you know, amazing men's programs, books. You know, when, when I started my own personal journey uh, as a man, really all that I found was Iron John, mm -hmm. Robert Bly. I went out in the woods and had a talking stick and beat a drum and said ho. And um, I, I'm sure there were a few other programs at mm -hmm. that time, but that's kind of pre-internet yep. so you somebody would, would have to have told you about it that. and um now with the internet social media for good or for bad all all that there's just so many conscious men powerful men teaching doing workshops doing retreats writing books and i really see that what's happened is you know we kind of went to this far extreme but now things are rising now we're talking stuff about consciousness and spirituality and power and yes. purpose and abundance mm -hmm. and uh I, I'm loving it. I'm having such a good time mm. just watching the process, being a part of the process, continuing to do my work. You know, as long as I'm alive and ticking, you know, I'll yeah. be doing the work. So let me ask you about that. What is it right now that you would, that you love the most about you and your life? And then I'm going to ask you the reverse, which is what you, what do you know you need to still work on? Yeah, what do I love? I do things on my terms. Mm. You know, as a recovering nice guy, you know, I spent most of my life trying to figure out what would make other people happy, you know, do that for them, not upset them, not rock the boat. Yeah, I mean, so, some of those anxieties are still in my nervous system. But I get up every day and, and live life on my terms. And I, you mentioned yes earlier. That's why it resonated with me that I just keep saying yes. Mm. And um, people asked me how I met my wife. I was walking down the street in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and I heard a voice said, hola, senor, want a massage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, no, hoy, tal vez mañana, not today, maybe tomorrow. Kept walking. I thought, I liked your voice. Uh. I turned around and said, how much? Quanto? And, and so we've been married seven and a half years now because I said yes to wow. something. I live in a beautiful home down there that I said yes to. I've got this great pit bull Nala that we just said yes to. Let's go. Um, all the amazing things in my life mm -hmm. have come because... I've given myself that freedom to say yes. That. And, and it, it is just, funny is not the right word. It's overwhelming the goodies yes. that just pour. I feel like I'm swimming in a sea of love, swimming in a sea of abundance. Yes. Swimming just, you know, love just rains down on me everywhere that. I go. That. And, and it hasn't always felt that way in life. Yes. But it, it really got to where I, I had to consciously start doing things on my term, doing it my way. And just, I, I had an uh, old dear friend. He's been dead for a few years now. Yeah. Old gay guy I met down in Puerto Vallarta. And he used to say, it's a sin to say no when you should have said yes. Yeah. That changed my life. Mm. Changed my life. Say it again. It's a, it's a sin. sin to say no when you should have said yes. That part. And he used to add with a German accent, it's a mortal sin yes. to say no when you should have said yes. Beautiful. And I, I mean, I just say no. I say yes to so many things I used to would have uh, had an internal debate, research, talk to people about, try to figure it out, yep. weighed the pros and cons. Now I just fucking say yes and walk through the door. Exactly. So w how would you, um, for the people who are going, okay, but how do I know what's a yes and what's a no? Well, people used to ask my buddy that too. So how do you know if you should have said no? Yeah. He goes, you usually no in 24 hours. That, real talk. <laughs> you know, in 24 yeah. hours. And, and he would always say that with a kind of a sly grin. I feel like it's 24 seconds, bro. Yeah. I think for me, and I'm writing, uh, it, one of the chapters in the book is God is a yes button. A ye mm. Right? So there's... God's not Santa Claus? No. He's a yes button. <laughs> no, okay. It's just one giant yes button. <laughs> and it's like, whatever you want, yes, right? And so I think there's something we've been so programmed and conditioned by the weapons of mass distraction to stop listening to ourselves, yeah. that people forget that y you have intuition, right? They call it women's intuition and men. Yeah. It's just intuition lives, right? And there's something about all the people I know who are living abundant lives are really excellent at listening to that part of themselves. 
And even for me, it's not always like words on a screen. No. Sometimes it's just my body is like, Ooh. let me give you a story. Not even 24 hours old yet. Yep. I was out there at this men's retreat, like I said, this week. Most mm. of the guys way younger than me. Most of them are really tatted up. Mm. It's just, you know, sleeves and leg. And I was talking to guys about tats. You know, I, I got a couple. Yeah. You know, a couple here, a couple yeah. here. And um, I said, you know, I, I don't go chasing a tat. You know, I, I, it's been a while since I've had one. But, like, I don't, I don't chase anything. I, I, don't, I don't pound on closed doors. Mm. I don't try to make stuff happen. But Let's when it comes, go. and so we're just talking about tattoos. I said, I don't really know what I want next. But I, I did, a friend of mine has a sleeve and has, has a blackbird on his hand. And for a couple of years now, whenever I see a blackbird, I think of my father, who passed away about 12 years ago. And I said, hey, Pops, any, mm. any kind of blackbird, crow, mm -hmm. raven, doesn't yes. matter. Okay, my, dad, my dad's nearby. Yes. And so I thought, a yeah, blackbird. I thought, well, if I, but I'd want something for my mom. She's going to be 89 mm -hmm. in about two weeks. And she loves, she's a gardener, and she has rhododendron bushes, a mm -hmm. native plant up in the Pacific. thought, well, how would I bring a blackbird rhododendron? So anyway, didn't give a lot more thought to it, but just thought. Yes. All right, so I, I, I leave the retreat. I, I got an Airbnb in Austin. So it's in this condo in downtown. And um, I, I just went out to go for a little walk last night. And I come out of the elevator, and there's some stores mm -hmm. right there, a, a barber shop, and then there was this, I thought it was an art store, art gallery, because uh -huh. there's there a, um, a Virgin Guadalupe statue right there. Uh -huh. And again, my wife's Mexican. Yep. They all pray to the Virgin Guadalupe. I got a Virgin Guadalupe, you know, uh, big picture in my, in my house. For my but then I saw some other crucifix art on the wall. Mm -hmm. And when I got divorced, 20 plus years ago, I started going to secondhand furniture stores and crucifix art kept calling me. That's, mm. that's where this tattoo came yes, from, yeah, yeah. a crucifix. And I don't know why to this day, I'm not sure, I'm, but I just kept saying yes. Okay, this guy had some of the exact same pictures I did on the wall and I walk in and it says, by appointment only. And I, said, I said, can I come in? It's just one guy in there. It's, it's a tattoo parlor. Mm. I didn't know that. Mm. I thought maybe I can find some artifact and buy it and take it home yeah, to my yeah. wife, right? That's all I'm thinking. But I go in. And so I said, kind of look at your pictures. And he said, well, we only, you know, do, I said, well, I said, I didn't know it was in a, a tattoo place. He's the only guy in there. Yeah. So I'm looking, so I start talking to him, ask him his name. We start talking about what I've been doing up here this week, the work that I do about my book. And I told him I'm giving, and I said, I said, okay. I said, what do I need? Look at, here's the tapestry. Yeah, what's, yeah. what's the energy state? I said, I want a blackbird. I want a rhododendron. He says, I don't know what a rhododendron is. He looked it up, and then he looked up James Audubon's raven. Ooh. It's beautiful. Uh -huh. It's in a series of birds that, that he did. And he said, we could do the raven here on the arm, you know, weave in the flowers, all black and white, yes. a rhododendron, take care of that palette. And I said, I'm here till Sunday. He goes, I don't have an opening till September. And I said, I'll take it. Uh -huh. So I wasn't looking, but here's just, you know, the Virgin Guadalupe. Correct. I go in, connection, connection, connection. Con and so, you know, I spent probably an hour talking with him. Wow. You know, a former, he said he was a heroin addict for 20 years. I think mm -hmm. he's been to prison, mm -hmm. recovering addict, vegan. Yeah, you know, we're just talking life yep. just because I said yes to walking in a door that says by appointment only. That. So that's just not even 24 hours old. Not looking for a tattoo, mm -hmm. but a tattoo artist found, found me. Exactly. Yeah, it's the when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Right? Yeah. And everything's the teacher. Right? Everything's the teacher. I would have these moments where I'd see these ants, right? I'm there for four days, two gallons of water by myself in the woods. And I'd see these ants here eating this worm here, right? And like having that experience. But then there'd be ants right over there who never interacted with these ants over here. And they ate the worms over there. And there's a spider who every day I'd pass on my walk, his name, I named him Leroy, right? <laughs> Leroy would pop out, you know, he'd see me, and as soon as I start walking forward, he'd be like, all right, you don't see me, right? And then I'd walk past, and Leroy would come back out. And I'd have all these epiphanies of, like, out of trillions and trillions and billions of ants, these ones found each other. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to do this dance. And they're supposed to eat this worm. It has a divine appointment. Do you believe in fate? I do. I think that we... It's interesting, because I don't know if I fully believe in it, but you tell me. I believe that there's no way we can miss. I believe that they're all roads lead to the exact same place, which is here and now, here and now in the body, here and now out of the body, right? Now, I can take this road, I can take this road, I can take this road, and every road I take, whatever timeline I choose, I win. You, you, I win. You're going to end up where you're supposed to exactly, be. Exactly, by divine appointment. Yeah, yeah so I'm, th this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up in fundamental Christian church. Yes. I have two degrees in religion. I was a minister for eight years. Mm. Got all the way away from religion. 
and kind of, you know, just no discussions about God. Yes. Like and, and, you know, I don't know, maybe because a couple near death experiences or just getting older, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's just too much to ignore mm-hmm. in terms of, of a spirituality. Yes. And if you'd asked me five years ago, if I believed in fate, I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think I do. I think yes. I do. And here's, I'm actually reading a book now that I think I found by fate because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm looking up guys to, to come on, on, on my interview, on, on my men's program mm-hmm. that I can interview. And I've really been wanting to reach out to some of the older, older guys. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Warren Farrell is going to come on my program. Mm-hmm. Robert Augustus Masters mm-hmm. is going to come. And I remember when I was reading Robert Bly, I mentioned, I also remember reading some stuff by Michael Mead. Mm-hmm. So I looked up Michael Mead and he's still alive. Mm. And he's got a book called Fate and Destiny, The Two Agreements of the Soul. Mm. So I'm reading that book right now. And he talks about fate is, is all the things that, that come at us that help open us yeah. to our destiny. Yes. And Oof. since I started thinking in terms of fate, it's really a couple of, well, a lot of things have come to mind. But one of them is, is that even every one of my fuck ups in life that. are part of the journey. They helped get me to where I am. The fate of, you know, things that I've, I had shame about, well, that was destructive, that hurt yes. people, that, oh, oh, but it was part of the journey that, that's part of the destiny. And I don't know exactly what that destiny looks like, mm-hmm. um, but it does seem to keep unfolding in mm-hmm. these really interesting ways. And so accepting that everything that's unfolded is unfolding perfectly Mm -hmm. and that all I have to do is keep saying yes Mm -hmm. to even the stuff that, oh man, I have so much pain that I did that and I hurt people. All right. I say I have to be a yes Mm -hmm. to that as well because it's brought me to where I am. Let's go. Another piece has come out of this for me is, you know, I work with so many men. You work with a lot of guys too. And so many men say, you know, I don't know what my purpose is. You, you, You mentioned David Data. You know, if some guy comes to me, Robert, I'm, 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 in, I'm in pain, I'm suffering, I don't know what my purpose is. Like, You've been reading David Data. Yeah. yeah, I'm just in so much pain. <laughs> and I said, well, Data looks at, at purpose kind of karmically, you know, yes. that, that you, you're here for this, and maybe that's destiny. Yeah. And I said, I believe we should get up and do everything mm-hmm. with purpose and passion. Brush yeah. your teeth with purpose. You know, get dressed, drive your car. Yeah. Driving from where I was earlier today, out here today, I thought I'm going to drive all the way to your house. I'm, I'm, we're in the Texas Hill Country, yes. and I'm going to look for beauty. Yes. As I drive. Instead mm-hmm. of going, you know, what, what's the GPS say? Uh, am, I, am I late? Am I gonna... No, I'm just going to look for beauty. That was my purpose driving mm-hmm. here was just to see beauty. And I saw so many beautiful flowers and ranches yes. and homes and just because my purpose, I said, okay, but here's my thought. Yep. The idea around leap of faith, we usually think of that in terms of religion, in terms of like belief in God or believing mm-hmm. in a doctrine or something like that. I think for a man to live with purpose and live for his destiny requires an amazing leap of faith Mm -hmm. because it means letting go Mm -hmm. of of knowing for sure where this is going to take me what the outcome is going to be who's going to be at my side Mm -hmm. what i'm going to encounter it it involves that big yes Mm -hmm. i don't know where the hell is going to take me where it's going to end up what it's going to cost me if it's going to take my life who i'm going to lose along the way but this seems to be where i'm called to go Mm. that's a leap of faith Mm. And and I think that is how we turn our fate into destiny. Oof. So I'm just I'm just kind of starting to, to look at this. Beautiful. Stuff. You're you're starting to look at it, but you've been living it for a long time. You know, that's that's you know I'll, I'll piggyback that. My belief is that there's no way to be outside of my purpose. I like that. Even when I'm unconscious, even wasting time on social media, all of it, whatever, yeah. cannot be outside of my purpose. And what is for me cannot miss me. And the God I serve doesn't need me to shuck and jive or get to some mountaintop because it says you are love right here, right now. Oh, yeah. And for me, you know, I've been, we, we sort of have similar paths, right? I grew up extremely Christian. And then I got to college and I read the autobiography of Malcolm X. And he said, you didn't choose your name. You didn't choose your language. You didn't choose your religion. All of that is slaves, slave master stuff. Right. And it jarred me. I was like, holy shit. And I reached out to my mom and I said, why are we Christian? And she said, well, baby, because Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And I said, okay, but why are we Christian? And she's like, well, well granny was. Mama. Okay, well, wh- why is mama Christian? Well, because mama was. Okay, but why was mama? <laughs> right? And we got to slaves. So I said, you're telling me that we're this thing because some dudes decided to rape, pillage, and 
sit in the ugliest parts of their consciousness. It's just like, well, when you put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, son. Yes, I exactly. raised you well. <laughs> exactly, right? So at that point, I was like, I'm done, right? Now, this is the beautiful piece. I turned my back on all of that. If you would even talk to me 9, 10, 11, 13, 15 years ago, I was so, there was so much vitriol because of yeah. the, I'm going to go real deep here. Until I met my wife, I had never made love to a woman. And the reason I never made love to a woman, one of them, is because from childhood, I was taught that my dick and my lust and my fuck was wrong and right. dirty and a sin. Hide it, repress yep. it. Exactly. Or se sex is dirty, evil, that. sinful, so save it for the one you love. That. That. And so every time I was having sex at 19 years old, I the first thought. Jesus is watching. Stop. Stop right now. Jesus is watching. You dirty bastard. You want a fun fact? Go read the Gospels. Mm. There's not one place in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John mm -hmm. where Jesus condemns anyone mm -hmm. for having sex. Bro. Not once. Bro. Not once. This is where, 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 where Christianity and all these preachers and churches got all this anti-sex crusade wasn't from the mouth of Jesus. Correct. That's the piece, right? So full circle. For years, I was, you, you brought that up. You, you expect me to come with the swiftness. And I had all the verses and everything to come. Now, full circle, I studied the life of Jesus, whether it was true or not. Right. Nobody knows if that dude actually walked the earth. Yeah. And whether he did or did not, I do my best, right? Watch this. If we walked out this way or that way, or that way. And you said, hey, P, what are their names? I'd say, oh, no, these are, this is my neighbors, Dustin and Danny. That's Richard. That's Chad and Abby. And I know all the houses all the way down. Mm -hmm. I know their kids' names. I know their dogs' names. I love my neighbor as thyself. I use the principles as a template for how to live, right? Which is absolutely interesting because, one, I was raised in it. It caused lots of deep shame and pain. And through that deep shame and pain, I went through such a revolution an involution that turned into an evolution that turned into a revolution in such a way that now I can look at the same thing I was raised in yeah. and extract the beauty and blow it into, in. bro, I, absolutely I, nuts. I, I love this because after I, I, was, I was a minister for eight years and after I quit being a minister and never just found anything, any particular religion that mm -hmm. called me back in, I, I thought 12 steps came the closest to maybe yes. being like the New Testament church. And I thought, but you know, I kind of like being a preacher. You know, mm -hmm. I, I had a doctorate in marriage and family therapy, so I've been a you know, therapist, coach, speaker for a long time. And I always said, you know, I don't, I like being a preacher, a lot of it, but I don't think any church would ever hire me again because I say fuck too much. <laughs> and I, yes, well, I, I thought I'll have to start my own church someday. And now it's funny coming around is I've, I've started a men's program mm -hmm. where I teach a lesson on it every week, things about love, about caring, about giving, and, and just you know about living good lives, being good men, doing better. Yes. And I thought, I guess I started my church. I you still did. get to say fuck though. Yes. But I, I want to give you something. When you talked about you know your neighbors, mm -hmm. right? you're loving your neighbors. This is a piece, just like we, we've, we've, we've twisted and misinterpreted so many things. Mm -hmm. Again, whether or not Jesus lived, you know, the stories of him were purely shared word of mouth for mm -hmm. 60 years for anything that was ever written down. Yeah. And it was written down in a language that he didn't even speak. Aramaic, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Let's go. so um, but here's an interesting thing. And it really ties in with, with this uh, million, abundant millionaire, millionaire abundant. Spiritual millionaire. Spiritual mil millionaire. Here's the cool thing. Is I work with so many people, go, I, you know, I just have low self-esteem. I don't, I don't know how to love myself. Or I just, you know, don't let anybody get close to me. And here's the thing. Jesus spoke something. And again, whether who we attribute it to or what. But he said something so profound, and you just said it. When the story goes is that the attorneys, mm -hmm. the scribes, you know, the guys that, you know, make sure everything's written just right, came to him to, tra to trap him. And they said, what's the greatest law? Now, Jews got, they got lots of laws. Mm -hmm. More than just 10 commandments. They got books and books and books of law. And uh, he just looked at him and he says, uh, greatest law, love, love God with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And he said, the second law is just like it. Mm-hmm which means they're the same. Mm. And the second law was love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Now, really what he said is there's no separate self. God, self, other, all the same thing. Mm. The love is all the same thing. Yes. But what he, he said something that most people, 
just kind of miss. Mm. And he, he, gets, he gave us the standard of which we are to love. And the standard we are supposed to love is self-love. That. Because here's the deal. We can't love anybody more than we love ourselves. Mm-hmm. We can't let anybody love us more than we love ourselves. And uh, my first job was, was a youth minister mm. up in the Ozarks of Arkansas. Mm. And they had this, I I inherited this bus program where they had these old beat up school buses where they'd go pick the kids up and bring them to church. And they called it joy buses and J-O-Y on the side of them. And the acronym they said was J is for Jesus, Jesus first, O others, others second, Y yourself, yourself last. J-O-Y. I thought, did they ever read the New Testament? Uh Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You can't be putting yourself last and have any kind of love for neighbor or for God. And then then even when Jesus was talking about the things we do for, you know, the the, the bums on the street, the mental ill person walking down 6th Avenue, this, that. And and he said, when you did that, you did it to me. And they said, when did we ever see you? He says, when you did it to any of them. So what he's saying is how we love the people who we don't seem deem to be very lovable yes. is how we love God. Real talk. And it all goes back to how we love self. And. So in order to say yes to this abundance that spirit, creator of the cosmos, wants to rain down on us, we got to be saying yes to us. Mm-hmm. We can't be living in a state of deprivation. Oh, you know, you know whatever you want is fine. I, I, I don't matter. We've got to consciously make our needs a priority and surround ourselves with people who want to help us get our needs met. That. From that place, Scott Peck wrote an amazing book called The Road Less Traveled. He said, when children experience the attentive parents who meet their needs in timely, judicious ways, they internalize a belief that they're lovable, they're valuable, their needs are important, and the world's just like their family. Mm. So what if we were doing the same thing, meeting our needs, surrounding ourselves with resources, people, practices that want to fill our bucket in timely, judicious, consistent ways? And then we internalize the belief, I'm love, yep. I'm lovable, I'm valuable. That will let me love you more. Yep. It will let me accept the love you want to give to me more. Yep. And um, I think we got a pretty good planet then. Fuck yes. All right, let me ask you this. What do you do personally for you that, that does that daily. I, I get up every morning, typically 7 o'clock, go down and uh, used to start with a cup of coffee. Now I start it with uh, the, the element, put the powder in the water. Mm-hmm. And um, I uh, 20 minutes of just stillness, just look, be in the moment, look around me, meditation. Then I uh, read daily thought for the day from a, a book on recovery for, for men. Then I do my morning pages. I write in my journal. Mm. And then about that time, my wife gets home from taking our daughter to school and it's time to take Nala to the park. So my wife and I take our dog to the park. And so I get to commune with my wife and with Nala while throwing the balls for her in the park. And I come home and then uh, it's time to get busy with my work. Mm. Then during the day with my work, I take at least two siestas a day. Let's go. Just, even if it's just 15 minutes, yes. go up, lay on the bed. Lately, I've been more religious about getting, I got a gym in my house. My wife's a gym rat. She's two hours a day. Yeah, I've, wow. I've got a gym. I've got a swimming pool. My office is 10 feet from the gym, but I'm, you know, mm-hmm. so I've been doing better religiously getting into the gym. Yes. I just hired a nutrition coach about yes. a week ago, starting to put into my fitness pal, yes. get everything I, I, I eat. And I thought, you know, however many years I got left on this planet, I'm, I'm shooting for at least a good 20 more years because mm-hmm. I, 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 think, I think there's still work to do that yeah. I'm here to do. So I'm going to take the best damn care of myself I can. So I'm going to put good food in my body, um, gotten where I rarely drink, uh, no dairy, cutting beef out. Just, and I'm not saying those are things people should do. Yeah. They're the things that I keep asking, what makes me feel better and what makes me feel worse? That. Too much dairy makes me feel worse. Yes. Taking dairy out, I me feel better. Too. <laughs> Taking beef out, I feel better. Yeah. Not drinking alcohol, I don't miss it. And so what's it adding? And again, there's no judgment in yeah. it. It's just what what makes me feel better. Yes. And then, you know, I, I make sure I spend time with my wife and connect with her, with my kids. Another thing that I do that takes care of me is every time I think of anybody I care about, Mm -hmm. if it's my mother, if it's my son, my granddaughter, my stepkids, my wife, I've been away for a week now. Mm -hmm. I send them a message right then. 
Yeah. Right then, right? I don't think, well, I'll get in touch with them later. I'll let them know later I love them. I just, okay, love you. It's thinking about, if I think of a buddy, I just send them a message yep. right then. Mm. And, and that fills me. That, yes. that keeps me connected because it's so easy for us to get isolated and disconnected. Yeah. And the more connected I am, the, the, the better shape I'm in. And I try to sleep well, you know. I got like everybody else got the aura ring, mm -hmm. you know. So I just try to do the things that that fill my bucket, make me feel good, and uh, I find I got a lot more. I got a lot more to give. Yeah, and it makes me more receptive when I'm conscious of giving to me. Mm -hmm. Then my wife, she's such a dear. She, you know, um, I'll be taking the garbage out. She goes, "Do you need help?" I goes, no, I don't need help. I, I'm just taking the garbage out. And I go, oh, "Yeah, babe, come on." Come with me. I need your help. Uh -huh. Or, you know, I get, I get up. I'm, we're eating at the table. I get up to get a, go get a fork. What do you need? I just need a fork. She mm -hmm. goes, I'll get it for you. I get, okay. Yeah. You thanks, babe. Yeah, yeah. I litter. Because she tells me, you know, Robert, well, she calls me Dr. Roberto. She says, Robert, you do everything for me. Uh -huh. You know, you fill my life up. You bless my life. You bless my kid's life. Yeah. You know, let me mm. do things for you. And you know what? That's a spiritual practice to let people do things for you. That. That, to me, makes, that's a part of being a spiritual millionaire. There's nobody I've ever met who is a spiritual millionaire. And I mean that in finances. Mm -hmm. I mean that in consciousness. I mean it in spades. Nobody I've ever met who's living a large life hasn't mastered that piece. Right? Saying yes. Saying yes. Letting other people contribute, though, is what I mean in particular. Yeah. Right? The... Because they want to. Who are we to rob people of the joy of, of giving to us? That. And it, but we do that all the time. No, I'll do it myself. Do yep. it myself. Yep. And um, I dated a woman a few years ago. And uh, she came over to my house. And I'd done my laundry. And, and, and I'd left the clean clothes out on, on the couch in, in, in my living room. And she started folding them. Well, I met her because she sold me shoes at Nordstrom. And mm. so she worked in retail sales. So mm. she's good at folding clothes. <laughs> and I said, don't fold my clothes. Don't do that. She goes, no, I like doing it. Uh -huh. And she said, it makes me feel good. And I go, and she goes, I won't put them away for you. I said, well, I'm not putting them away either. I'm going to let them sit there in a stack <laughs> and think, I'm loved. I'm loved. <laughs> and, and so it was a challenge, but I st started leaving all my clean clothes out yeah. on the couch for her to fold. Yeah. Because I thought, who am I to rob her of that joy of doing something to show me her love? Yeah. Let me ask you this. What are, this is tricky, you don't have to answer it. Oh, I, <laughs> you know I'm going to then. Yeah, so I've lived some life, right? I'm okay. 43 going on 44, and I made some pretty big, on the surface, look like mistakes. Big learning experiences. That hurt a lot of people, yeah. What's one of those for you that you still haven't fully come to terms with? Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't have to give yeah, us yeah, the yeah. details I'll of get, it. I'll, I'll, I'll get you close enough. Okay. I began... If you want to call it a path of recovery or path of discovery, path of, you know, mm -hmm. it got me where I'm sitting here talking to you today. Because I was uh, unfaithful in my first marriage. Mm -hmm. I, I was a minister, mm -hmm. had an affair with a member of the church, who mm -hmm. also happened to be my wife's friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I married her. Uh, we're both married. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I did it up good. I did mm -hmm. it up good. But that wasn't enough. It, that didn't do the trick. Mm -hmm. um, so I got married to the woman I had the affair with. Yeah. And um, our, our marriage soon quickly went on a downhill path mm -hmm. for, for a number of reasons. One of which, that's just not a great way to start a relationship. Yeah. Uh, I, I acted inappropriately about two years into that. And then I stopped because it wasn't fulfilling. And But about a year later, the person told my wife about it. Mm -hmm. She wasn't happy, of course. And, and she said, you need help. If you don't, go, if you don't get help, I'm going to leave you. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want her to leave me, so I went and got help. And luckily, I found, I, I, it found me. Mm -hmm. I just fell into just some of the most amazing places to give me exactly what I needed to yep. start, you know, just working on me, my recovery, my integrity, my authenticity, my honesty, mm -hmm. my transparency, my ability to set boundaries, to say no, to say yes, to ask for what I want, to connect with men especially mm -hmm. and get my needs met and fulfilled there rather than seeking them from women. Yep. And so, that, and that's where I wrote, from that process is how I wrote No More Mr. Nice Guy. So, um, you know, I thought I'd, I, I thought I'd handled that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it taught me the lessons that it needed to teach me. And then um, uh, that that relation, that marriage ended after 14 years. And as I said, I was single for, you know, and dating and having some relationships for about 12 years before I met my wife. And um, the last relationship I had before getting with my wife, who I'm married to now, I cheated again. 
Mm. No reason to. I mean, I'd broken up with this woman two other times before. Yeah. It's not like I didn't know how to break up with her. Yep. I'd done it before. And then she, you know, would work on her stuff when we get back together again. And, I, and it wasn't just the fact that I cheated on her, but I cheated on her for a while. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, just living in secret, telling yep. lies. And you know what? What, what, what amazed me the most and, and the part about what, what I've not really gotten figured out yet is how, how did that, how did, it, how did I get into that place and go so unconscious for mm -hmm. so long, mm -hmm. knowing the damage and pain I was going to do when, and, and she found out. Mm -hmm. And when she found out, guess who the first person she called? Mm -hmm. My mother. Mm. She called my mother. She told on you. She was like, Robert <laughs> cheated on me. <laughs> so, um, so, so, you know, it, yes. it came to a screeching halt. And so the first time I see my mother after that, we're driving, I'm taking her out to eat lunch. My mother just looks at me, good Christian. She goes, what the hell were you thinking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom, I don't know. She goes, don't you know of anybody, anybody that, you know, and, and I don't know, maybe some of that was her karma, my karma. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I remember, I, I, so I struggled with it. Not not just the fact that I cheated, but it, it went on. I'm yes. telling lies. I, I hate the fact that I'm a good liar. Yes. I, I don't I don't like that about uh, me. Yeah. And I, I've got a good friend. He's a psychologist. And I, I was telling him, you know, I was in pain about this for quite some time. Because mm -hmm. not only, you know, not only I hurt her bad, you know, th this is like so diametrically opposed to what I teach men. Correct. You know, live with integrity, authenticity, nothing hidden, nothing half-assed. Yep. Yeah. And, and here I was doing it. Mm. And um, my friend said to me, and, and this, this may be this part of the fate. He said, Robert, you can be a dick, but you're not a dick. Mm -hmm. He says, integrate those two pieces together mm -hmm. and you'll be okay. Yep, yep. And, and now I, I just take that with everything. I, I, I've got a dark side. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got ugliness. I'm, I'm a judgmental motherfucker. I can mm -hmm. be critical. Yep. And, I, 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 and, and, and I'm also a generous, loving, mm -hmm. caring person. Yes. And and so integrating those two pieces for mm -hmm. me, I think, is part of my work. It's, it's part of that the fate, the destiny mm -hmm. that I, I, I've got to be integrated where I can be one of those what you see is what you get kind of men. Yeah. Now, out of that, it got me back into searching, searching out a group of men. Got connected with somebody you know, John Wineland, mm -hmm. and spent six years with, in a program with him. Just saw him this weekend. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so... It led me back into yes. the work I need to be doing. So what I realized is that the only way I could be unfaithful and do that for an extended period of time is for me to be closed off from a posse of men mm -hmm. and not be sharing what's going on. That. And I've got a group of guys now in my life that have been there for about six years mm -hmm. who we're committed that we're going to, we talk every other week yep. um, and we're going to do it till we die yep. the rest of our lives. Yep. And, um, we don't hide anything. We reveal everything. Ups, downs, happy, yes. struggle. You know, they're all excited. I'm here in Austin doing interviews yes, this yes. week. And, and you know, the, excited I'm talking to you. And yes. But, you know, if I'm down, if I'm struggling, if I'm having a hard day, they know. Yep. I tell them. Because this stuff creeps up on you, creeps up on you, and you keep it in, you keep it in. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, stuff comes along and you go, oh, yep. that, that feels good. Someone's paying attention to me. Somebody, nice. somebody thinks I'm special. So, you know, I, I, I got to have an accountability crew. Huge. Got to have that. Huge. Let me just point out two things. One, thank you for going there and sharing that. Because one of the big conversations we've been having in my men's group, which I've been in for four years with John Wan and, and Brian Reeves and Joshua Werner and all these guys who are all in men's work, is there's been an enormous lack of elders to not just know the way, but to show the way and, and go the way, right? And, and that's one of the reasons why I deeply appreciate you in particular and nothing, it's not a competition between way of the superior man or X, Y, no, or, or no, you know, I, I love that book. I've read it 30 times. It is an amazing book. I don't find him to be a good elder, right? That's my truth, right? And if, if David was sitting right here, I'd say the same thing. Yeah. So you fucking hide, bro. You run away. You wrote something epic and you ran. And like, okay, awesome. John Wineland picked up the yeah. baton, yeah. right? Other people picked it up. And John's helped me carry it. Right? Exactly. So it worked out, and I appreciate, and here's the crazy part. When we first met, there was so much synergy, so much like, yes, this. It feels like, and I'm going to go super spiritual here, there are schools of thought that say that there's only one life, right? Splintered off into these individuals, 
supposed consciousness, right? And every once in a while, for me, I meet somebody who I'm like, that's me. Like, it feels like the same, mm -hmm. but like different, right? That's how I feel around you, right? We have not seen each other in a thousand years, yeah. and we're instantly right back. I, I, I remember when I, I kept seeing this guy when we first met you. Like, Who's that good looking black guy <laughs> with, with the goodwill cast offs? Yes. Yes, that's good. Yeah, I mean, every every time I saw you, you had on a different outfit. Uh -huh. and we're staying at you know this this retreat in, in out the woods. The woods yeah. and you've got a different outfit every time I see. You. Who is this dude? Yes. So you had my attention the yes, entire time. Bro. Yes, I received that. And uh, just for everybody out there listening, success leaves clues, right? This guy's been has has held had a group of men to hold him through the ups and the downs. Essential. I am experiencing one of the most abundant seasons of my life ever. You better have good men. And I have good men. You better. Right? You I got these it. guys. You need it now, too. That's how I got here. Yeah. Right? My wife and my crew. And I think there's, I think everybody needs that. I think everybody needs people that they can grow into, that they can lean into, that they can say, hey, I can't take this home. Right? I don't, I don't want to take it home. But I want to, I want to unpack it here so that when I go home, I'm clean. Right? I talk to John and that crew every day. Beautiful. For four years, we have talked every day. Beautiful. It happened this morning, right? And yesterday and the day before. And so for me, there is a high level importance to having a council, whatever that council looks like, yep. of people who can hold you because the darkest moments and my shadows are crazy, bro. I'm, I have a fucking killer inside of me and a lot of energy and I'm sexy. Right. And so it's all it's all here. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that was a joke, but it's not. No, a joke. it wasn't a joke. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a little I, I, bit like the first time I see that, that guy's sexy. Yeah. As fuck. <laughs> Who is that guy? Yes. Right. Where do you get that outfit? Yes. Yes. Right. So the for me to keep not the devil in the hole, because I don't even believe in a devil, but to integrate the shadows, which I don't call bad or wrong. No. Right. They just aspects of me uh, that want to be expressed. Integration. Yes. Integration is. Dark and light, mm. masculine, feminine, spiritual material. Yes. How do we be, bring a consciousness to all of those pieces of who we are yes. and not diminish any of them? And, that, and that's probably the piece you and I both got out of a yes. lot of religion. Oh, repress those parts. Mm -hmm. No, whatever you repress, it comes out somewhere. somewhere. And when it comes out somewhere, mm -hmm. it's not pretty. It's, it, 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 it's not nice. That. That, so that's why finding, you know, this is, we're talking about nervous system work, right? Yeah. You find a safe space and people often come to me and they're like, how'd you get X, Y, and Z? And bro, I knew you when you had nothing. How'd you get here? Right. And I'm like, one, I built a somatic body that can hold this. Not in one day, but over time. Yeah. Right. The overtime part is I kept finding safe spaces for people to hold me. I kept finding safe spaces to learn, to, you know, we learn by, by demonstration as well. And so, again, because so many of us didn't grow up with elders who stood in their power and in their body and in their juiciness and their funniness and all of that stuff in such a way that we, as youth, could look and go, ah, oh, that. Yeah, right? that's how you live. Right? That's, to me, that's my work. I consider you an elder. I am too. And I know 100%. that people are watching. Right? And so my work is to go, okay, how do I keep myself sharp? So that I can be a demonstration for you them. you got to add that posse. Mm -hmm. Can I add a piece to that? Please. Because here's, and maybe maybe you've already seen this. Because, yeah, I'm a big believer. I, mean, I haven't even told my abundance stories. When, when I came out of my second marriage, I started going back to 12-step groups again. Just to have a, a posse, a group of men to talk to. And started practicing a daily gratitude practice then. First mm. word, first thought in my head every morning when I wake is thank you. Mm. And I just spend my day in, in a state of gratitude. And that... That lets you see the open doors and walk through the open doors and, and be grateful for all that is. Now, here, here's a piece, you know, that, that posse that, that helps sharpen us mm -hmm. and keep us from going down these pathways where, you know, the dark side just takes over because it's not, it's not explored. It's not visible. I was talking with some, some men at this retreat this weekend. Where I'm at right now, you know, I've launched a program. We're over 600 men now building. I want it to be the world's largest online program for men. It's not in competition with mm. anybody's. I, I want us to, you know, cooperate. We got 3 billion men on this planet mm -hmm. who, who, who need, who need us. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I'm building this program and, you know, men look up to me. They respect me. 
and you know, I'm the, I'm, I'm, I'm the founder, the elder, the mm -hmm. driver, the owner of this program. And like, the, like I said, this week I'm sitting out there, I'm sitting in a big chair out in concrete and I'm looking out and some of the guys took pictures. There's like a dozen guys sitting on the concrete around me, just asking me questions like I'm this wise elder. And, and you know, I go, that's what they mean when they talk to you. I, w I went and learned at his feet, you yes. know, just... And you know what? I don't think my ego is going to take me in the direction of thinking I'm infallible. Mm -hmm. I know it all. I got the answers. It's my way. I don't see we, we, in, in my men's program, Integration Nation, we, we, we often joke. It's not a cult. It's not a cult. <laughs> um, it, 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 but I don't know. <laughs> can, who can you believe? <laughs> I wouldn't believe a cult leader. You know, but here's the thing. I, I have two fears. One fear is of dementia. Oh. Uh, my grandfather had dementia. Mm. I saw my father slipping into it before he had a stroke and died in 2009. My mother had a stroke four years ago. And that's one reason why I'm eating well, mm -hmm. cut alcohol out, exercise, get yes. to sleep. If, if I'm going to keep making that big, you know, dent in the, in the universe, mm -hmm. I, 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 I got to have this got to be here. Yeah. This got to be sharp. I, I mean, I might be alive, but if this isn't sharp. Yeah. So I have one fear of dementia. And I also have the fear of where is that line where men cross over, where they start out building something of value, but at some point their ego mm -hmm. takes over. I've seen it. And, and, it, and it becomes, you know, they become a destructive force. Yep. And so that is where my posse still comes in. I've got people, you know, basically with, uh, I got a rope tied around my waist yep. and good men hanging on loosely to the other side. Mm -hmm. But if they start seeing warning signs that, you know, need my attention, you know, they, they're going to tug as, as hard as tug. So I got good men in my life to, to you know, to, that will let me blow up in yeah. all the good ways to, yes. to create everything I'm capable of creating and, and not lose myself in, in the ego yes. uh, of that. So I again, still just that. a need for good men. I love that because when you think about, and we can name them, we could spend all day naming Men who had something amazing and they blew it up because of Look pussy at how many gurus and power. And, yes. and, and, you know, I was watching the Bikram one and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, someone mentioned him just the other day. I said, oh, him too. I knew, I knew Kundalini, Kundalini yeah. Yoga guy and Osho, so many, all Osho. of those guys. And they, they let the power get to them, right? And or the vagina. Yeah. And it's usually a combination of both. And I think it's, that's the key every single time is do you have somebody, do you have yes men around you or do you have people that will pull you aside? Yeah. I've been pulled aside at least 20 times yeah. by my guys. Like, hey. That's love. That's love. Check we it. need brothers who love us like that to say, mm -hmm. can, can I share something with you? Mm -hmm. are, are you? Are you open to, you know, some mm -hmm. sharpness? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is a big deal. Okay. So let's end this thing out. I'm going to do some rapid fire questions. Rapid fire. And just go back and forth. What, what does money mean to you right now opportunity mm. i can build something bigger yes bigger 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 yes if you only had let's call it 30 seconds you had a microphone you could speak to the whole world what do you say love yourself start mm. with you mm. do something good for you right now what are five things you love about you physically physically Oh, got to start with my hands. Yes. Hands. Do I get to count sense of humor? Mm. Intellect? Mm. Nah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hands, feet, chest, eyes, smile, ears. They, yeah. don't, they don't poke, poke out like my dad's did. Ah. Did I get five yet? Yeah, yeah. You got to six. I love it. Okay. I love it. Okay. When you hear the words spiritual millionaire, what comes up for you? When you said it, when we're walking in here to sit down, honestly, I didn't even think of money. Mm-hmm. Didn't even cross my mind. Mm -hmm. Didn't even cross my mind. It struck me as a person that it is just blissing out on every good thing mm -hmm. they've got in this moment. Yes. Nothing missing. Don't need anything else. Not living in the past. Not living in the future. Not measuring, comparing themselves to anybody else. Mm -hmm. I've just got all, everything I, I, I need right now in this moment. And in this moment... This is such a beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. Isn't this great? Winning, winning so hard. Robert, thank you. It's been awesome. Preston, it's, it's so good to see you again in person. It's been way too long because I love your energy. I love hanging out with you. Um, uh, I, I will make a conscious effort that we yeah. connect more. Yeah, especially when you come back in September. Come back, bro. Yeah, let's, I'll come back. Let's I'm, do something. Uh, I'm already, already, hey, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I got dinner plans this week. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll hook you up with my friends for dinner. Epic. I'm here for it, man.
Thank you so much. Love you. you. Thank you for this. I love you. I appreciate you. Everybody go buy his books. Find this man and immerse yourself in his work, in his essence, in his energy. It's not just the words that are on the paper. It's the energy that was put behind them. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for doing the work that you're doing. It is super important that we tune in and tap in and come back to the well of consciousness and be replenished. It is not lost on me or us that you're doing that work. And from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say how proud I am of you. Love you. See you on this other side. Keep living an abundant life. Mm -hmm.